Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Bolsheva. Um, some of you that might not have seen the last couple of episodes, maybe not, or even just the last part of the last one, might be wondering what on earth's going on. On. Now, if you want to know in full detail, um, do go and check out the end of the last video for like the last five minutes where I kind of explain what's happened and how we're fixing it. But I'm going to just briefly, very briefly, explain what's gone on and what we're going to do about it. So basically, there was a glitch in the database for whatever reason. It didn't generate fixtures for the championship group. And as a result, uh, we didn't have the rest of last season. However, that did then carry over into this new season, which means there's no league fixtures at all for season seven. I do know, however, that it does fix itself for season eight. So as a result of that, we're only going to be playing Champions League matches and cup games in in this season. Now, originally, I said that I was going to be able to do that in two episodes. So we'd have one episode, which would be Transfer Window, some Champions League games, and the second one would be the final Champions League games because we're not going to get out of our group, let's face it. And then moving on to that. However, um, it's taken such an abominable long time as I kind of underestimated just how long it would take to do so much stuff off of camera. So it's actually going to be three. So today is going to be Transfer Window because there's been an absolute buttload of stuff going on and um, the first Champions League match, which happens to be against Real Madrid, by the way. So that's a fun one. The next episode is going to be two Champions League games as a double live com. And then the third one will be a three triple header of live coms in the Champions League. And then, yeah, uh, I just didn't want to miss a day of upload. So I've been working like crazy to try and get this fixed so we don't miss a day of uploads. So season uh, seven is going to be very truncated, essentially. Uh, that's the gist of it. Go back and watch the end of the last video if you really want to know the more ins and outs of what actually happened and why and all that jazz. So yeah, do that or carry on watching this. Hence the lack of the costume and whatnot. I just wanted to get this done so we can get moving forward with this safe. But there's still a lot of juicy stuff in today's video. Believe me. First things first, the board upgraded the data analysis facilities twice, which is really nice. They're also upgrading the youth recruitment and youth uh, junior coaching budget thanks to the Champions League windfall, which means we now have 17 million in the bank, which is very, very nice. As you can see, Victor Hugo on more money now. He signed a new deal. I got him on a new contract. He's got an 80 million pound release clause in it now, which should keep him at the club nicely. Um, I don't think we're going to have to worry about players not complaining about football because technically those games don't exist so as a result they're not going to complain about playing in them hopefully might be a bit of an issue with loan signings but for the most part it's been okay there's been some huge ins and outs in this window though like to the likes of which you wouldn't not believe our b team sadly lost in their cup final we got a million pounds for the europa league participation last year just from tv stuff so that's nice but it's nothing compared to the uh, 14 million we got from the uh, champions league for this year also jim gannon apparently has resigned from stockport i got a random news article about that so that's fun unfortunately we did slip down a tenth again in the coefficients due to the performances last year we need to bring that back up again this this season. Thankfully, though, that's actually going quite well at the moment because um, only one team didn't get through to the Europa League group stage. So we've got three teams in the Europa League group stages and us in the Champions League group stages. So that's really, really nice. Lechia sadly didn't get to the Champions League, but they are in the Europa League. So that should really be nice. And because there's no league fixtures, those teams are going to have fresh squads. So I actually think there's a good chance that some of our Polish teams could perform quite well in the Europa this season. So that's very interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, we could have some real longevity there. And the board are also spending 1.5 million on upgrading the youth facilities as long with uh, along with another million pounds of sponsorship which is very nice we've also played a super cup um i'm just gonna tell you now i can't even be bothered it, it's we won 2-1 jan peltz actually scored two goals in the super cup final uh, because there was another match that day and a load of people were ineligible but we still managed to beat lechia and won the super cup with a massively rotated team and jan peltz was the hero so with that out of the way um there's a lot of stuff to talk about because there's been some huge outs and some huge ins, and one in particular, which I think you guys are going to like a lot, has to do with a certain suave boy. So let's just jump straight into that now. I'll show you the outs first, because you'll be like, good God, he sold half the squad. So the first deal out is Slava Mehmil. He's left to join uh, Fortuna Dusseldorf for... 1.5 million rising to 2.2 million pounds. The main reason I did this was because his contract is up at the end of this season. I could have given him a new one, but looking at the way his potential, he's kind of plateaued a little bit and I figured this would be the best chance to get some money for him. And so we have 2.2 million is what the deal will rise to. We've got 50% of our next sale fee clauses in virtually every one of these transfers too. So just consider that as well. Um, so I think that's a good piece of business. Bartosz Neugebauer has also moved to Fortuna Dusseldorf. A lot of people complaining about him and I kind of agree. I haven't been able to get him the goalkeeper I wanted. There was a guy that was playing for Carpati and I nearly had him a deal agreed and all done but he had chose to join Mainz in the end which is a shame but Neugebauer has gone 1.2 million for Fortuna Dusseldorf and I thought that was really good business to get him off the books because he has been making a lot of mistakes uh, and to get over a million pounds for him too which is very nice obviously I've been spending money in and amongst this but this is just going to show you the outs Stanislav Pilar has left and joined PSG 3.3 million pounds they triggered his, tra his release clause um now I know there's a thing you can do that stops that and I have done that with Mane but I wasn't particularly bothered about doing that with Stanislav Pilar because I don't think that he was the right type of player his height made him really difficult in this role for us so we we bought him for a million sold him for 3.3 
it's a nice piece of business for me in the long run. It's, it could have been could have been better. I was trying to hope to do that thing where I could um, let them have him for 2.8 and put a 50% clause in, but he's gone. We've made 2.3 million on it, and there's another 3 million in the bank. Conrad Kasselik has left the club. Um, there was just too many players, and he wasn't going to get any game time. £30,000, so he has left as well. Giovanioli's gone out on loan, uh, because you'll see why in a minute, uh, to Viswa. They're paying all of his wages and some extra money on top, so that should net us like 100 grand this season too, which would be nice, and keeps him with some football. And also, it gives other Polish sides uh, some good players. And that's what I've really tried to focus on. I also sold Christoph Zayats to Piast, who are newly promoted soon, I think. Next season, probably, because there's not been any changes to that. Sold for £600,000. We got him for free. Can't go wrong there. And now the big one. Mariusz Pomorski. So, someone said to me, do GKS potentially have some kind of benefactor? And I think they do, because the money they... I told you that I negotiated a deal with them last uh, Christmas period about potentially moving Pomorski on, but he wasn't up for it, and then they changed the deal somehow, and I don't know how that happened. Point is, they came back in again, and I thought, surely they're not going to fall for this twice. They did. They, they fell fell very hard. Uh, so they put an initial bid in of like 1.5 million, which is still like three times what we were getting bids on him from other clubs. So I was like, all right, let's see how much they're willing to pay. So I countered with six and a half million and they went all right and so he's gone <laughs> i can't believe this firstly you'll notice that he's on 17 and a half thousand pounds a week these guys e even though they're not going to be playing in the top flight this year because no one is they're newly promoted and they're spending 17 and a half grand a week on a player like pomorski they've got lunatics in charge of that club and we sold him for six and a half million pounds they also came in for conifal later in the window and i tried to do the same thing again and i had a deal agreed with them for seven and a half million pounds for Mateus conifal unfortunately conifal turned down their contract i don't know why I can't imagine what they were offering him as a contract, but there you go. So that netted us an absolute buttload of money. First one is one I actually signed last season. He just finally joined. This is Pierre duvalier Hibel, who is a uh, Haitian player who played for a team called Mirabale. Oh, Mirabale? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Uh, it's going for like £15,000 or whatever. He's joined us. Uh, he's got some camps for Haiti. I thought, you know what? I love an obscure region. I wanted one of my own. Here he is. Then it's Kane Pavey. He's back on loan from Bournemouth on a two-year loan deal. Hopefully they won't recall him or anything due to the fact that there won't be so many games. But I think if he's playing enough games, they shouldn't care. Then a sort of a random one. This is uh, Torsten Berheit. He's coming on uh, on a free transfer, basically, from uh, Ostia Vien. He's five foot two. He's the shortest man in the world. Um... But I thought, you know what, for the comedy factor, we might as well bring him in. He's on very little money and, of course, more importantly, uh, free. Next up is a signing, an actual signing. 475 grand, Attila Pinta, a Hungarian who's coming from Ferenc Feroz, uh, Feroci over in Hungary. I think he's decent. Be good in that attacking midfield spot, particularly as we lost a couple of players and whatnot over this period. So I thought, you know what, let's bring him in. Um, couldn't really argue for that kind of money, to be honest. So I think he's a solid piece of business for us. So he's joined us as well. One final loan signing in Enzo Milot, who's coming on loan from Monaco for the season to play in that right wing slot. I couldn't get Tony back as they'd sold him to Espanyol for 2.5 million. I could have had that deal, but they weren't interested in selling him to us, or rather he wasn't interested in joining. So this guy's coming from Monaco for the season. Can't really go wrong with Enzo Milo. He is left-footed at playing on that right-hand side, so I feel like him cutting inside could be a little bit interesting. So next up is a goalkeeper, Ibon Iriondo, who's come in on loan, not on loan, uh, full transfer from Deportivo Alaves. Now, obviously... Don't worry, I've signed a proper goalkeeper as well. This guy's one for the future. The option was there. It was a million pound release clause, but I felt like he had that potential that we couldn't really turn down. So we brought him in as well. Million pound release clause. In he comes. And this, as you know, is Herman Car Carballo. He's coming on a permanent transfer. Million and a half, but... Even though he only scored four goals last year, he did enough for me to go, actually, this guy's probably a really good player for that role. So I was happy to bring him in on a permanent deal at 1.5 million. And I think that's a really solid piece of business, to be honest. Um, I don't know if that was a release clause or something, but whatever reason, he's in. Next up, we've got Milan Raja Boeing. Uh, someone tell me how to pronounce that surname. And of course, give me the nicknames and player rumors about these guys, even though you're not going to see that much of them this season. Well, you will. You just, yeah, it'll be very fast. Um, central midfielder, two million pounds is quite a lot, I admit. But Vitesse... 13 passing, 17 vision. I think he's just recently played in a game, so that might explain why some of this is on the down at the moment. Um, I think he's a really solid central midfielder, and he hopefully will play a heavy role in behind Kane Pavey this season. So for the £2 million, I thought it was a solid piece of business. I know I say solid piece of business a lot, but... I feel like it was worth it this time. Then there's Victor, who's come in from Sao Paulo. A million pound again. There wasn't a lot in this deal. This was more of those, I felt like we could sell him on for more in the future. And that's kind of why I did this deal. Bring him into Europe, get him that work permit for other clubs, and then potentially sell him on. And I think there's a real potential of that. So a million pounds. To be chucking around a million pounds here and there, I know is quite a lot. But 
I don't know, it just felt right at the time. I then went up and picked up Vasil El Khatib, who's coming from Ludogorets. He's Bulgarian, he's just got one cap for them. Uh, he's coming from a million and a half pounds. I wanted another right back, because Siransky and Givignoli, I wasn't sure about their development. So I thought, you know what, let's go and get this guy. Unfortunately, something else has happened that means this is less of an important signing, but he's still here. And he has really good physicals, six foot tall, a million and a half pounds. In he comes. And now he's our actual goalkeeper. This is Elton Lopez. He's a Cape Verde uh, goalkeeper, coming from Maratimo over in Portugal. I think he's decent. He's mainly just going to hold down the fort for a bit until such time as I can find someone better. But for half a million pounds, I was pretty content to bring him. He's already got 41 caps for the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, I think he's decent and hopefully he'll do an all right job for us this year just to tide us over. That's why he's not on a super long contract. Next up is a signing that I kind of just made because he was available. This is Dirk Punenberg. Mainly six foot five, 16 tackling, marking, heading, all really good off the charts. He'll make a fantastic backup um, centre back to us. He's, he's just basically like Conrad Kasselik, but better in every way. So I figured he'd come in, do an all right job for us for the year. Lovely old job. And the final but one signing this is Kevin. His name is Kevin. I couldn't really resist him. He's an attacking midfielder, pretty decent overall. £300,000 was the release clause on him, and I was happy to pay the 300 k to bring him in and see what he can do for us. Again, he's one for the future, not really one for now, but it's just nice to have him. He's a shadow striker, which is why I was interested. I've tried to stay away from any consistency issues on apart from a couple who were just too good to turn down, but for the most part, there's that. Now, there's one more signing. Um, You're going to like this. He's back! I can't believe it. Piemeshwav Yamrog is back at Polonia. He's back home, boys, where he belongs. Um, we've signed him back from Rakov. He wanted to play in the Champions League. I noticed that Lechia had put a bid in and it came up on my um, news items. And I was like, because I think we were going to get some part of the deal. And I was like, let's see if we can do this. He had a release clause or something. We were able to pay 2.4 million up front, one lump, bam. Um, and not only that, we got like 200 grand back because of the clause in the contract when we sold him to them. So Przemysław Yamrog is back at the club. He's still got decent potential. He'll be our starting right back this season to move around things in there. He's back. I can't believe we've got him back again. Um, suck it, Rakov, is all I can say about that one. We win in the long run. And almost all of those signings out, apart from the release clause triggering of Pilar, have all got 50% of next sale fee clauses, which is going to be delicious if any of them do move for big money. So with that in mind... Let's take a little step further and go towards today's game. Sadly, none of the other Polish sides managed to get into the Champions League, but we do have three teams in the group stages of the Europa, and that is going to be a godsend. We just need to have a decent season uh, in Europe as Poland this year, and that should be able to keep us in the top 10, because the last thing we need is to fall back to 11th and lose that automatic Champions League group stage berth, because that is really what's keeping the league alive at the moment. Santiago Solari is managing Real Madrid. Oh yeah, we're in a group with PSG, Real Madrid and Benfica. You can see what I mean about our struggles. They're not going to be easy games. Third place is still well beyond us, I feel like, but we're going to give it our best shot, defend like crazy and have a crack. So I'm going to just do a quick pick here. I'm going to turn off these filters because we don't need these on. Literally, I couldn't even field a full team with this uh, before. So, Fiacic. Milot makes sense really to put him in there. Victor Hugo, of course, Carballo, Pavey, Patino, Yamrog, Pandurovic, Vinovic, Kokoschka is now back in the team, of course, um, as a result of me selling Pomorski. Might look for another left back at some point, though. Lopez is in goal. Lovely. As for the bench, we're going to go with Khatib, Siratsky, uh, Bowen. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Do let me know, is it Boone? Uh, Todorov, Mane, Gorka, and of course, Pinta. Let me know about Pinta. That doesn't seem like it's the way to pronounce it. I might just call him the Hun. <laughs> They're playing it. It's the battle of the strikerless systems, lads. Um... Okay, sure. Their playmaker is actually Essencio on this side. We're just going to make the best of this, I sense. Now, I know I could have just holidayed past all of this and started from the start of that season, but I, I wanted to... I didn't want to skip stuff, and I felt like this was important, particularly because if I'd holidayed, I wouldn't be able to control signings. Players would have left. Even though you say reject, they'll still get the release clauses triggered and stuff like that. So... It was a lot of time taken up, but I felt like it was worth it for the integrity of this save because I'm not going to let one little obstacle ruin this save. Hell no. And I know a lot of them don't have the faces. Um, we'll sort that out when we're into the proper new season properly and everything's kind of back to normal. So, tactically, um, I have no idea what to do against the Straggler system, to be honest. But what we are going to do is go defensive, obviously. Um, maybe turn that off as well and just look to a bit longer passing like we have done in the past. Uh, and maybe don't do that either. Just... Yeah, <laughs> just do our best. It's going to be a toughie, isn't it? God, it is good to be back actually playing matches is what I would say. We still have some domestic cup games. I'll just play those off camera this season. I feel like we'll do all right in the cup, though, given the fact that we've got no league games. Uh, none of the other clubs do either. So that's why I really do think that Polish teams might have a good crack in Europe this year because they'll be so fully rested. I'm just going to play loads of friendlies uh, in between to keep the match uh, the match fitness up in the players. That's that's the plan anyway. But we could dig across that. Here we go. Milot. Might be able to have a slight... Carballo? Oh my god, what a chance that was. We could have taken the lead at the Bernabeu. Oh no! <laughs> Kokoschka! I bet we don't have any options. Marlon is going to have... How about... Yeah, we're going to have to put Yamrog on that wing. 
Oh dear. Particularly as they're both we're both playing strikerless systems today, so this is gonna get very, very interesting. No way. Uh oh. Watch out, it's coming all the way through. Goes back for Asensio. Back at Yoko. Oh, Grimaldo. Ball across. No way puts it in the back. Oh, it's a regen as well. No way makes it 1 0 to Real Madrid. Their first shot of the game. We denied them a shot for 15 minutes, but they now do have the lead. Uh, it seems they were just kind of toying with us. Uh, and waiting for us to slip up a little bit. I think maybe Yamrog could do a bit better here, but he's nowhere near getting to that. Unfortunately, being played out of position is probably going to be the death of this match now for us. We really do struggle for left backs here. Essentio again. I feel like Noe could be... Stu oh my god, Isco's gone straight through. Oh, wow. Th that sheer extra quality of Isco there has now made it 2 nothing Real Madrid. And, and that really is the difference between us. That that extra ability. Like, there's no... no He has no right to be scoring from here, really. Because he's so far out. There's a whole defence there. He's just ghosted through them. And a simple finish past the goalkeeper. But nothing Elton can do about that. It's 2-0 Real Madrid. This is not going well. It's a half-time, and it is 2-0. Um... Not really much more we can say. We're going to go back to our normal style of play, though, just to try and... We're keeping more of the ball. We might as well allow that. But I don't really think there's much we can do tactically in this to really turn things around currently. I think it's just a case of uh, grit our teeth and bear it and see how few goals we can concede against them, really. And it's going to be much like that for most of the Champions League, you feel. 33 degrees! Isco's ball. Oh, God. Edge of the box for Asensio. Get out to him, lads. Blocked. No, nope, blocked. Cleared. Oh, dear. That was close. That was very close. Yamrog. Vinovic. Oh, no. Hands it straight to Danny. Oh, puts it wide. That was a huge chance for Real Madrid there. Go on, son. Yamrog lobs a throw in. It's going to come back to us. Imagine if we scored a, a goal here. Yamrog whips it across. M oh, wow. And Milot nearly managed to get it. Well, that was the best chance of the game for us. I've got to say, we've actually done a pretty good job at limiting Real Madrid. Maybe if we just started off by trying to play a bit more of our natural game. Um, maybe we went a little bit too uh, different. Like, because we've actually been pretty good at just defending against them. Not really fashion much ourselves, but to lose only 2-0 here isn't the end of the world for us, really. It's nice for confidence and whatnot. Please don't give him a third towards the end, though, if you could. And he's gone past one, gone past two. That made it a little bit too easy for him there, lads. This goes ball whipped in. Oh, no. Oh, well played, Lopez, to get that over the bar. Great work. This should still be the end, though, really. Isco whips it in, headed away by Fiatic, and that will come to an end. 2-0 to Real Madrid. Not the worst result in the world. It could have been a lot worse for us. Pandurovic still had a pretty good game at the back. Um, just lacking a little bit going forward. Maybe if we played our natural game a little bit more, we might have had more luck. We kept a lot of the ball in the second half, that's for sure. So, here's how the schedule looks. So, next episode is going to be both of these matches. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain and Benfica. That's going to be the two games we've got. We've got a cup game in there off camera as well. There might be another one in there. I'm not entirely sure. So, that's what. Coming up back for the 1st of October. A little while off in between. Um, still going to take bloody ages, but we're going to push on through and make this happen. So, if you have enjoyed this, and at least if you... I say if you're looking forward to the season. If you just... Keeping up with the save. Drop a like on the video. Um, that would be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't always look like this, I promise. We're going to get back to it for Season 8. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode as we try to just get this stuff done and uh, see how things go because I still feel like we have the potential to pull off a shock or two. We're capable of it. Imagine if we snuck into third and got Europa League after Christmas. That would be fun. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.